Hello friends, this video is on uh, the left ventricular pressure volume loop and the effect of preload and afterload on the left ventricular functioning or LVPV loop. Uh, before we start with this, uh, I would suggest you to go through the videos which we have made on LVPV loop in a normal cardiac cycle and uh, concepts of preload and afterload, how they influence the left ventricular performance. So, uh, let's begin with this uh, particular aspect left ventricular pressure volume loop and effect of preload and afterload. Let's have a quick recap of these concepts. Uh, a preload on the left ventricle is indicated by the end diastolic volume. Pre is before, before the contraction starts. Uh, now end diastolic volume means volume of blood in the ventricle by the end of the diastole. Greater that volume would mean greater end diastolic length, isn't it? More ventricular filling. So by the end of the diastole, the ventricular muscle fiber length will be that much greater. It means that greater length will be the starting length for the next systole, isn't it? End diastolic length becomes the starting length for the next systolic contraction. And you know the Starling's law, greater the starting length or initial length, stronger is the contraction. Stronger contraction means greater stroke volume, obviously. So, increased preload or increased end diastolic volume increases the stroke volume in the next systole. We have seen that already. This is just a quick revision, a quick recap. So, increased preload increases the stroke volume by Frank Starling law. More the venous return, more is the stroke volume and cardiac output. And the second thing that we saw is increased afterload decreases the stroke volume because afterload is an opposing force. As the contraction begins, afterload starts opposing the contraction and in the face of that afterload uh, or against that afterload, the left ventricle has to contract and eject the blood. So, the stroke volume decreases because it's an opposing force, the afterload. So, increased afterload decreases the stroke volume. All right. Let's see those effects on the LVPV loop. Now, this uh, shown in the white color is the normal LVPV loop in a uh, normal cardiac cycle. You see the phase number one, if you recall, this is the phase of filling and the diastole is ending at this point. Now, this is called as the end diastolic volume. Normally, end diastolic volume is about uh, 125 to 130 ml. In this graph, it's about 130 ml. And it is the preload on the left ventricle. As we have said, end diastolic volume uh, reflects the preload on the left ventricle. Now, you can see here that increased preload shown by increased end diastolic volume. See, the end diastolic volume in the loop that is shown in the orange, the end diastolic volume is now 150 ml. Instead of 130, 150 ml blood is filled in the left ventricle. By the end of the diastole, that much blood is present. So, increased preload will increase the stroke volume because next ventricular contraction will be stronger. Systolic contraction will be stronger uh, by Starling's law or Frank Starling law and it will eject out more amount of blood that stroke volume increases. So, these are the changes you can see. There is increased end diastolic volume. Increased preload means increased end diastolic volume and end diastolic length. Of course, uh, fiber length will be that much greater because more blood has filled during diastole. So, uh, the next that happens is increase in the stroke volume. Stroke volume increases proportionately, which is shown by the width of the loop. See here, the width of the loop has increased. Stroke volume has increased. The third point, increased in the increase in the left ventricular pressure. Now, in the previous video, I have mentioned this, that the height of the loop 
is a left ventricular pressure of course because on the vertical axis there is left, left ventricular pressure but what it indicates it indicates the after load this is what we have described anyways in this particular uh, graph we are talking essentially about the left ventricular pressure only so you can see height of the loop has increased which means left ventricular pressure also increases with next systole left ventricle is contracting stronger as it contracts stronger there will be a greater pressure inside the left ventricle so left ventricular pressure will also increase uh, with the preload uh, being increased so uh, three things so far increased edv yes increased stroke volume as indicated by high uh, greater width increased left ventricular pressure as indicated by increase in the height the fourth point uh, to me is the most important point to be understood and that is end systolic volume remains the same remains normal this is the end systolic volume you can see here systolic ejection is this phase which is coming back during systole the volume is coming back and this is the end systolic volume end systolic volume you can take this point or this point it's the same volume on the horizontal axis it's remaining the same it's 50 ml normal end systolic volume is 50 ml and you can see with increased preload and a stronger contraction during next systole but by the end of that next stronger systole also end systolic volume remains the same 50 ml why is that and what is the implication of that let's take examples normal end diastolic volume was 130 ml and from that norm uh, 130 ml next stroke volume next systolic contraction ejected out 80 ml you can see here in the loop 130 ml end diastolic volume then the blood was ejected out and by the end of the ejection it came to this point or this line which is 50 ml 50 ml left behind means from 130 ml 80 ml was ejected out in the next systole so what is left behind 50 ml so 50 ml is the end systolic volume by the end of the systole 50 ml remains in the left ventricle now let's talk about the preload and frank starling law now end diastolic volume is an extra 20 ml filled 20 ml extra was filled increased preload load is happening now so uh, now the end diastolic volume is 150 ml from that 150 ml end diastolic volume stroke volume increases we have said that already that next stole is stronger so stroke volume is greater stroke volume is 100 ml instead of 80 ml now the stroke volume is 100 ml so from 150 ml if 100 ml ejected out in the next systole how much will stay back by the end of the systole 50 ml check that 50 50 that means uh, end systolic volume remains the same that's the outcome of frank starling law so frank starling law can be described in various ways one way of uh, describing it is more the venous return and more the end diastolic volume more is the preload greater is the stroke volume and cardiac output so more venous return more is the cardiac output that's one way of looking at it the other way of saying it is heart ejects out all the extra amount of blood also uh, that came into it as venous return see extra 20 ml was filled so end diastolic volume became 150 ml then in next systole instead of 80 ml 100 ml was the stroke volume that means that extra 20 ml was also ejected out that uh, in addition to the 80 ml so heart pumps out all the extra amount of blood coming to it as venous return so uh, that's how 
we can also we can describe the frank starling law the left ventricle ejects out all the extra amount of blood filling into it uh, in addition to the normal uh, normal amount of blood normal stroke volume so that was the effect of preload on the left ventricle now coming to the effect of afterload again one more time revision increased afterload decreases the stroke volume because afterload is an opposing force uh, for the left ventricular contraction and therefore it will decrease the stroke volume and this is the change that you can see let's understand this change let's see what all things are happening uh, one by one first things first increased after load uh, and uh, by the way after load is the aorta pressure we have done that already uh, on the left ventricle the after load is the aorta pressure left ventricle as its uh, its systolic ejection starts it has to face the aorta pressure it has to overcome that aorta pressure and uh, pump out the blood eject out the blood so uh, increased after load first change decreases the stroke volume that's clear by now you can see width of the loop will narrow yes we can see here this is the normal width shown in white and shown in the orange is the uh, width uh, with the increased after load so width has narrowed stroke volume decreases and the next changes are important to be understood if the stroke volume is less what will happen to the end systolic volume if the stroke volume is decreased then by the end of the systole more blood will stay in the left ventricle obviously less blood is ejected out during systole so by the end of the systole more blood will stay back in the ventricle isn't it so next change is increase in the end systolic volume we can see here that uh, this was the end diastolic volume this is the end systolic volume this was the normal end systolic volume and now you can see the change end systolic volume has increased on the horizontal axis there is volume volume end systolic volume has increased that's another change of increased after load increase in the end systolic volume third change is increase in the height of the loop well uh, we have already said that height of the loop indicates left ventricular pressure and by implication it also indicates after load aorta pressure or after load on the left ventricle so increased after load uh, is seen by increase in the height of the loop because the after load has increased left ventricle is trying to contract stronger to overcome that increased after load to overcome that increased aorta pressure so height of the loop has increased definitely increased after load uh, and uh, therefore also increase in the left ventricular pressure which is on the vertical axis the next point is very important so i need your complete focus for the next five minutes these three changes are clearly understood width has narrowed so stroke volume has become less uh, and therefore increase in the end systolic volume that is also understandable height has increased after load is increased that's also understandable but you must have noticed by now and you must be uh, raring to ask this question why is end diastolic volume shifted here why there is increase in the end diastolic volume there is no mention of that anywhere in our discussion but in this loop it shows increase in diastolic volume why the answer is obvious look there is increase in the end systolic volume okay end systolic volume has increased by the end of the systole more volume is there in the ventricle then it goes into diastole 
it receives its normal quota of blood what will happen to end diastolic volume yes end diastolic volume will also be higher than normal it will increase i repeat once again for those who might have missed this point end systolic volume has increased that means by the end of the systole more blood volume is there more than normal blood volume is there in the ventricle then the ventricle goes in diastole it receives its almost normal quota of blood i am saying almost nor normal quota of blood during diastole why because look uh, if the stroke volume is less please note this point if the stroke volume is less cardiac output also will be less less blood is ejected by the left ventricle less blood is circulating throughout the body which means left blood less blood is also coming back as a venous return so eventually less little less amount of blood is going to fill uh, during diastole but little less not very less so i am saying i am coming back to the point end systolic volume is higher then as the left ventricle goes in diastole it receives its almost normal quota of blood little less maybe but almost normal quota of blood so what will happen to the end diastolic volume end diastolic volume also will increase but i have shown this increase as a slight increase not with the same proportion okay so please note the next point uh one thing that you have noticed end diastolic volume also is higher than normal but it is an indirect effect it's an indirect effect just because esv was higher therefore edv also is slightly higher so that's why there is increase in the end diastolic volume and note this point increase in the esv is greater than increase in the edv check this out increased increase in the end systolic volume is more than increase in the end diastolic volume look if both were increasing in the same proportion then the width of the loop will remain the same stroke volume will remain the same but that's that does not happen what happens is end systolic volume increasing much greater compared to increase in the end diastolic volume which is shifting slightly and therefore the width of the loop is narrowing width of the loop indicates what it indicates stroke volume so therefore stroke volume uh, also uh, i mean stroke volume is decreasing due to the increased afterload a fascinating fascinating physiology i tell you and uh, many many more such discussions and graphs are coming up in the uh, in the next videos so it will be a good idea to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon and you will get all the notifications